So, how do we go about this? Let's uh, let's get this all stuff out of the way. And let's um, let's try to solve this. So, part A. I like to I like to write down right at the outset what I'm actually going after because you're going to go after different things and you want to state where you're headed in the in the first place, right? So I'm going to say well, actually I'll write it over here and then I can turn off my projector. For part A, I'm after dH or dt, and for part B, I'm after the base area. Now A is a bit of a catch-all name. Like A could be the entire area or it could be just the slant um, area that shape which if you unfold it, it will become a sector. But I'm just going to call B, I'm going to call it DA on DT. That's what I'm after. And I want each of those, um, the rate at which each of them is changing, good morning, when the height is two meters. Okay, so I'm just going to add that to both of them. Okay, and that's all I need from this question. Well, that's all the question tells me. Right? Okay, so if I want dH on dt, and what I know is dV on dt, how do I connect these two together? We've actually been spending a lot of time doing connecting things like these together when we've been doing integration, right? And we do substitution. How do we connect these things together? Any suggestions? Yeah, I'm going to need to um, appeal to chain rule. The reason why is because I've got dV on dt. I've got to somehow connect V to H. But the way that volume and height are related to each other in a cone is it's the volume formula, is it? What is the volume of a cone? Does anyone remember? It's a third pi r squared h, okay, which is actually a really famous result. We'll, um, we, we can prove this actually doing volumes, like just think about a line and then if you rotate that around an axis, you'll get a, you'll get a cone. So it's great that we can prove this, but now we just need to use it at the moment. So to get to d h on dt, Right? What I'm going to really want, dh on dt, is I want dh on dv and dv on dt. Now, how did I write that? Where did that come from? Okay. Just think about the pieces that I want and the pieces that I've got to build this thing. Okay. I want a dh on the top and I want a dt on the bottom. That means I need the dv's to cancel. This is exactly what was happening when I was doing integration by substitution. It's like, oh, I'm changing the variable here. That's exactly what I'm doing here in a sort of, it's just wearing different clothes, okay? Now, when you look at dh or dv, that's a bit of a weird thing to calculate, being that v here is you differentiate v with respect to h. But I can do that and I can just take the reciprocal, okay? So let's do that. This is what I want. So in order to get there, to get the piece to go in there, I'm going to say, um, but I'll actually write it here. dv on dh equals, okay, so don't be too confused here, right? What's going on here? I've actually got a pair of variables. This is a bit of a problem for me, right? Because I'm only differentiating with respect to h. And it's important you recognize these are both variables, right? It's not like r is some number that's locked in stone. R is getting bigger. Here's r and here's h. Does that make sense? So I'm actually not ready to differentiate this thing yet. I can't because I need to, good morning, I need to get everything in terms of a single variable. Yes. Okay, so how, how do I do this? Perfect, very good. Now just stop for a moment. I could have said this from the beginning. I could have actually, as soon as we saw that 45 degrees, I could have said this, okay? But it wouldn't have been obvious, like I wouldn't have encountered this problem until I knew, hey wait, to differentiate this thing, it's not a function of h yet, it's a function of r. And H. So I sort of, as I go through the problem, I realize this is what I want, therefore I want this, therefore I need to change this. As you start to get a little more familiar with this, you're like, oh, as soon as I see this problem, I actually need to make the statement the kid just said, and cool, this is what kind of triangle in here? It's an isosceles triangle. So therefore I can say, actually, R is equal to H in this particular triangle. So in case you missed that step, right? I've got a semi-vertical angle in here of 45, which means I have another um, angle of 45 over here because there's a right angle. That's a perpendicular height there. You okay with that? So 
Lovely. That means I can actually say, since r is equal to h, this is really a third pi r cubed. But I don't want it in terms of r, do I? I want it in terms of h. So instead of a third pi r cubed, I'm going to write it as a third pi h cubed, right? Okay, now I'm ready to differentiate. Can you tell me what the derivative is? Yeah, that, that 3 just comes out front. It cancels with that 1 third, and it becomes pi h squared. You happy with that? Okay, so now that I've got dv on dh, what, why was I getting dv on dh for in the first place? Yeah, because I actually want dh on dv, so I'm going to take the reciprocal of this, and then I can use it. <coughs> in okay, so let's do this. Um, that's dv on dh, so dh on dv is 1 on pi h squared. Now dv on dt, that was the first thing I wrote down. That's just a number, right? It's constant. So I just multiply this by 3. So this is uh, 3 on pi h squared. Okay. Now, this is a little bit weird. So hold on a second. What was the original question? It was, at what rate is the height changing when the height is 2 meters? Okay. Now, you see that I have to tell you what the height is? Because let's have a think about this, right? What happens as the height gets larger and larger and larger? As my as my pile of saying gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what is happening to this whole quantity? It's getting smaller and smaller. It never gets to zero, does it? Well, that makes sense because it's going to get bigger and bigger. But it slows down. Of course it does because it has to fill up more volume. So this, this height gets slower and slower and slower as it grows. But now I can just actually substitute in when h equals 2. Okay, so I'm so glad you asked. <coughs> it's traditional, just like when we were doing integration, right? An integral doesn't have units, but we use it to work out an area or a volume, right? So then I think kind of the nicest way to say it is just like that, a derivative has no units, but what I'm after is what this derivative represents is the change in height over time. So I can say, therefore, um, the change in height, like I introduced all this notation, right? So I'm gonna put it back into words. The change or the rate of change um, in height is, and now I'm going to supply the units. This is 3 on 4 pi what? Okay, so the units are going to come from whatever units I was using. The only units that I have on the board with me are all from this dv on dt. Do you see that? Right. So it's in meters and minutes. Meters per minute. So let's just stop for a moment, because I actually took a bit of a circuitous path through this, and I can do this more directly now that I'm a bit more familiar with this question. I drew my diagram so I could work out like the geometry of this thing. I took the result that was given to me in the question. You always get some kind of constant, like this is how much water I'm pouring in, or this is how much air I'm blowing into my balloon. And then I thought, well, okay, based on the question I'm being asked, how can I take all of that and put it all together into channel, okay? Channel is the thing you always find relates your rates together, okay? Now, on the basis of that, I wonder if you could have a go at part B. You're looking at the area of this base, yeah? The area of this base. So again, you're gonna have to appeal to some kind of formula so you can differentiate that and then relate those rates together. Why don't you have a shot? I'll give you a few minutes to get a head start.